spot. You gotta shoot your shot when you see your spot. Shoot your shot when you see. You gotta shoot your shot when you see your spot. Time check, 9 p.m. in Manila. Uh, packed up all my gear, a bunch of video equipment to cover uh, this trip that we're taking. Mount Pulag is one of those holy grail mountains in the Philippines that absolutely everyone wants to be able to climb. It is not the highest, I believe it's top five or top three maybe. Um, it stands at about 2,920 meters above sea level. Um, and it's just, from all the pictures I've seen and everything looks absolutely beautiful if you, if you go there at the right time. The weather, doesn't seem to be cooperating for the moment, um, but let's see when we get up there. Um, there are multiple ways to do the mountain. I believe that we are doing one of the easier trails, um, but part of the challenge was we wanted to see if we could actually do it in 48 hours. So leaving from Manila to coming back to Manila and climbing the mountain in between, <laughs> doing that in 48 hours. Um, it's gonna be quite tight, but I think it's gonna be really cool and interesting. 48 hours is not a lot of time to do anything. So if you wanna do it, get ready for some sleep deprivation and lots of caffeine. Mount Pulag is the third highest peak in the Philippines, sitting around 2,926 meters above sea level. So after meeting up with everyone, we went into the, the coaster van that you saw a while ago. Um, we were in there for three hours and a half. I got a total of zero minutes of sleep. I am so tired. Uh, now we arrived in Baguio. Um, we're about to go to breakfast and to the jumping off point for Pula. The easiest way to get there is to take an overnight bus from Manila to Baguio, which can take anywhere from four to six hours. You'll arrive, sleep still in your eyes, at dawn, at which point you'll need to make your way to the DNR station in Benguet, about two hours away. All right, so just finished breakfast. Now we are on a jeepney on our way to uh, the registration area. Um, and it's so nice and cold in here. It's like natural air con. That's stupid. Mount Pulag suffered through a couple of years of overcrowding and unruly hikers, so the DNR stepped in and imposed additional requirements for anyone interested to climb in the national park. You'll have to check about two months ahead for permits, and if you have the choice, I would recommend not doing it on a weekend. We were lucky enough to do it on a Monday, yet there were still lots of other groups hiking at the same time as us. Morning. Morning. So, all of you, first time to climb Mount Pulag? Yes. yes. Hello sir, nice meeting you sir. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Mount Pula National Park. The added rules are a good thing. It keeps everyone in check. The Cordilleras have a rich biodiversity that needs to be protected from people who have no respect for the environment and the local customs. Just take home everything you brought with you. It's not a hard concept. at our base camp it's raining it's super foggy as you can see behind me we just ate some of the best that rice was so good the vegetables here are always so good and there was a ginger chicken but we were too tired to say anything because at this point I haven't slept in 28 hours so I'm absolutely tired um, what we're gonna try to do is stay up till 6 p.m. because we leave at we wake up at 12 midnight uh, to start hiking at 1 a.m. so it's gonna be quite rough and we're here to shoot. <laughs> so this is gonna be interesting. Sea of clouds. 
We were here with Commonwealth and Nike ACG to document the trip and test out some new equipment. You gotta shoot your shot when you see your spot. Shoot your shot when you see. You gotta shoot your shot when you see your spot. Shoot your shot when you see. You gotta shoot your shot when you see your spot. Shoot your shot when you see your spot. You gotta shoot your shot when you see your spot. Shoot your shot when you see. You gotta shoot your spot when. Yo, Time check, 8 p.m. Um, gonna go to bed, and we're waking up in 3 hours and 30 minutes to start the trek in complete darkness. Well, don't trust what you heard from the bubble, dog. I've been busting out features on a double tree shuttle. The FaceTimes asked me how a brother stays so humble. Hey! Happy birthday, happy birthday. Hiking is not just about the summit, it's really the experience. And for you to talk to them, to know more about the mountain, your experience must must mayaman. Diba? It's more, more memorable. I love that we were accompanied by local guides who are extremely knowledgeable about the area and the stories shrouding the mountain. They call it the playground of the gods, and it's quite sacred for them. They also make the climb look way too easy, sometimes going up twice or thrice in one day. There are four major trails up the mountain, Ambangeg, the easiest, Ambagyo, the longest, Tawangan, and Akiki, the toughest. Due to our time limitation and the size of our group, we went through the easiest one, an eight kilometer climb up with gradual inclines. That was a good uh, 40 minute trek. Deep breaths. No, that's a good idea, Mike. Deep breath. Through the nose, through the nose. Through the nose. And then out through the nose also. So it's, uh, it's your boy DJ Yurk with the old nose name. We're doing uh, our thing. Team, team F to C1. Yeah. It's a lot of sweat, man. <laughs> The climb will take you about five hours and it's striking. Going up, you don't really see much since we started around 1 a.m. However, you can feel the transition in humidity and temperature as you go through the pine forest, moss forest, and grasslands. All things you can appreciate on your way down. You do have the option of camping at camp one or camp two, but if you can manage a 10 hours walk, just do it as a day hike. I've seen the highlight on the hill And brother, if you cannot feel the joy The whipper will Now I hear it Once at the top, and if the skies are generous enough to open up for you, you are greeted by stars as they give way to the light of the sun. In this moment, the show begins. Clouds stretch between peaks like blankets being dried out in the air, flutter with the wind covering every inch of green in front of you. The restlessness that for 10,000 days has remained. Oh, the glory. The spectacle lasts a couple of minutes, and as it dissolves, the warmth of the light starts reinvigorating your frigid and tired limbs, giving your shakes a rest so that you can truly appreciate nature's work. Oh, inside me. So we made it to the top of Pulag. <laughs> that last piece of climbing was pretty tough, but all in all, it's okay. Personally, the worst part of hiking for me will always be the way down. All the elation you felt at the top quickly disappears as you fight tight muscles and strained calves. 
but at least in this case, the scenery is a welcome distraction. On our way back down, sometimes the way down is harder than the way up, especially because it was really cold up there, so uh, we kind of lost the warmth that we generated, and now everyone's legs are kind of hurting. But it's absolutely gorgeous here. So nice. Higher, take me, Lord, take me on up to the higher ground. Champagne and after parties, a Cadillac for every day of the week. It's so good. Now, I know we didn't do much talking during that whole episode just because we were just so tired and we were walking and we were actually shooting something else uh, while doing the climb so it was really complicated to, to explain anything here so I hope the voiceovers um, helped a little bit. Um, but all in all, you know, people who say it's an easy climb, it's the easiest way to get up Pulag but it doesn't mean it's an easy climb, it's a moderate climb. We can really feel it in our legs. People would be eating so much food just to try to recuperate. And I think what made it even tougher for us was that we did it within that 48 hour from Manila period. But as you know, we did it. So it's possible if you just have two days to make it, climb Pulag, it's absolutely beautiful. One of the best mountains I've been to in the Philippines.